So breast cancer is, uh, is the number one cancer among females uh, all over the world uh, in, and also in Asia and Southeast Asia and, in, and in including Indonesia as well uh, and it, has, uh, it is increasing in uh, most parts of the world um, now the, the, the incidence meaning that the, the numbers of breast cancer cases are increasing but the, also the, what we call the survival from breast cancer is also uh, increasing. So that means that the, the treatments for breast cancer have become better and better. Yeah. So, so that's uh, in, in, in most parts of the world uh, and, uh, and including Asia as well. And what are the risk factors of breast cancer? The main risk factors yeah. of breast cancer, especially for yeah. people here in yeah. And yeah. Asia. yeah. So the some of the common risk factors for uh, breast cancer number one is age. So the older the older you get, the higher your risk of getting. The older the woman is, the higher the risk of getting uh, breast cancer. In general, generally, young patients uh, don't get breast cancer as much as older patients. Although, it, but the, what is unique about Southeast Asia uh, and Singapore is that. Uh, <coughs> there is there is some young women do get breast cancer, but generally mostly women above six, 60 years old and above have a higher risk of getting breast cancer. Yes, that's right. Uh, other common risk factors for uh, breast cancer is uh, obesity. So you know, being uh, overweight will increase the risk of uh, breast cancer. Uh, not having any children. Yeah, so you've never had any children before. You also have a higher risk of getting uh, breast cancer. Uh, and uh, alcohol is also, uh, you know, the, 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 it, it, if you drink a lot of alcohol, you also have a higher risk of uh, getting breast cancer. So these are some of the common uh, risk factors. As you said earlier, that uh, the cases of the breast, the breast cancer is increasing, as well as the treatment is mm. getting better. Uh, can you tell us what are the advancement of cancer treatment in the recent years? So, there have been advances in in every area, in surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, all of it has uh, gotten better for breast cancer. You know, so surgery, you know, many years ago, almost every woman will need to have their uh, breast removed, the whole breast removed if they have breast cancer. But these days, most women can uh, have just a lump pectomy, just remove just one part, the part of the breast that has cancer. And then often, after that, they may need, ra then they will have radiation. And the results are just as good as having the whole breast removed. So a lot of patients actually think they still need the whole breast removed and actually you don't need to have that anymore. Yeah. Other things also, there's newer chemotherapy drugs, newer, new, new chemotherapy drugs that have, uh, that have improved the outcomes as well, meaning that patients are doing better with the new drugs and new targeted therapy drugs as well. So, so targeted therapy drugs, depending on the type of uh, breast cancer, you know, uh, there, there are newer types of drugs that, that also improve the survival and improve the outcomes for breast cancer. Uh, and then I'll let Dr. Chu talk about the radiation as well. Okay, well how about the investment therapy in breast cancer, especially in radiology? Yeah. So, so the radiotherapy is to, it doesn't cure cancer per se, but for those who have a lumpectomy or those who have lymph nodes involvement, <clears throat> so when they have gone to the lymph nodes, then the chances of recurrence is higher. So radiotherapy is to reduce the risk. <clears throat> now if you have the cancer on the left side of the, of the breast, then the heart is underneath here. So sometimes when you can cure breast cancer, then 10 years later they have problems on the heart because you also radiotherapy the heart at the same time. <clears throat> so now we have this uh, technology called active breath hold. Then you take a deep breath in and you hold your breath and the radiotherapy is given when you're holding your breath so that you move the, the breast away from the heart and then so that you won't have any heart problems later on in life. <clears throat> so this is this is a new thing and the other thing that the real therapy we have intensity modulated that means the real therapy can aim where we want to aim so it goes in a circle and we can treat both breasts at the same time not one breast alone but both at the same time yeah and very advanced breast cancer we can treat at different targeting and sometimes when the cancer has spread for stage 4 disease gone to the brain we can accurately they don't need to do surgery anymore because the real therapy we call it radio surgery we can give a high dose to the part of that brain and it, as if they had surgery so that part of that brain and cancer will no longer work 
so you actually as if you're removing it and that without surgery so five days of treatment you don't have to go for surgery the radio effect surgery. It, it's called radio surgery yeah <laughs> that's why it's called stereostatic radio surgery SRS and other parts of the body like the liver and part of the bone we also can give this kind of uh, places so that the long-term control we're no longer talking about a few months we're talking about many years even they have stage four they can probably live for a long time so this is the advance because the software and the technology the machine accuracy has improved the technology so that we can see where we aim and then we are very accurate we are like the sniper you know no longer you shoot everything yeah. you do a bomb bomb everything you know yeah, yeah. every of the patient suffer so but now it's safer, much safer we are homing on one spot only most of the time they don't have any side effect because we only kill mm. the cancer not the normal tissue around not so this, side effect at all no side effects sometimes okay. zero oh, side effect oh, okay. that's something okay. and for targeted therapy or the anxiety therapy uh, how what is the current success rate so for targeted therapy uh, for early stage breast cancers, you know now we have over 90% of breast cancer patients who if they need targeted therapy, about almost 90% or more of them are cured of breast cancer. So that is a big uh, advancement. Yeah, so and that's because of the new targeted therapy drugs. So so we're curing a lot more breast cancers than we used to before. Now unfortunately obviously that some patients present very late. So they present with late stage breast cancer, meaning stage 4 breast cancer. Now, these patients, we still cannot cure them. But even among these patients, they used to maybe live for maybe only 1 to 2 years. But now with the new targeted therapies, the average age, for example, for what we call the HER2 positive breast cancers, it used to be only, it, the, most of them would only live if they present very late for maybe 1 year. But then now, on average, if they get the best uh, targeted therapy drug, most of them live on average even 5 years. You know, so, so that's very long. So, so there's many breakthroughs for early stage breast cancer where we're curing more. And even for late stage breast cancer, many of them are living for many years. But, but the important thing is to, is to detect it earlier. So we have a mammogram, yeah? but a lot of people don't, don't go for mammogram. So mammogram in Singapore, yeah, even in Indonesia, actually over 50 years old, we should go for mammogram every two years. Yeah. So we always say that pengesalan awa, pengesalan awa akan menyemakan nyawa. Yeah? The same thing, if you diagnose with stage 1 and stage 2 cancer, the chances of survival is going to be more than 70 to 90%. Yeah. You diagnose with stage 3, you know, it's 50%. Then you diagnose with stage 4, you cannot be cured. So the aim is actually to increase awareness for them then to get early detection. And if you have a mammogram, cancer like calcification, about 5 mm, you can detect it on mammogram, you can never feel it in the breast lump. So 5 mm we can detect it and then they go for operation, it's going to be stage 1. And that, that is very important message to the public that you need to be active to go for screening <coughs> mammogram. So how often do we need to go check ourselves to do screening? How so the screening uh, policy is over 50, 50, between 50 to 80 years so every 2 years. But in the population in Singapore, for whatever reason, the 40 to 50 years old, there is a young group of women who have this uh, higher risk of cancer for a certain search. So we do it once a year. Once a year. But at least 50 years and above, you should every go for a mammogram uh, screening. Once every two years. Once every two years. Every two years. Okay. Yeah. Females, eh? not males. <coughs> so about the cancer treatment, there's not only one kind of treatment, right? You sometimes the patient should uh, uh, use a lot of different treatments. Yeah. Proper special treatment, different yeah. speciality have to come together. Uh, mm -hmm. How do this kind of treatment uh, work together? Like which or uh, yeah. which one will come first? Yeah. So for breast cancer, we always say is what like what Dr. Chu was just saying. It's a multidisciplinary uh, effort. Meaning, what it means is that you need many different types of specialties to come together. So for breast cancer, you often need a surgeon, you know, who does the operation. You need a medical oncologist, someone like me, and a radiation oncologist, someone like Dr. Chu. So. Which one comes first depends on the type of breast cancer because even among breast cancers there are many different types uh, and as well as the stage of breast cancer. For example, you know if you have a stage 3 breast cancer that has spread to the lymph nodes and it's very big, the surgeon may say it's too big for them to operate. So they may send to, to me, the medical oncologist, to do the chemotherapy first to shrink the cancer and then the operation becomes quite easy. You know, and then sometimes even that after you've done the operation, done the chemotherapy, the operation is still not enough. Then you need to do the radiation as well. So that's where we all, all the three, the surgeon, myself, 
uh, the, uh, the radiation oncologist and also even sometimes the radiologist who does all the scans and the pathologist who reads the type of uh, breast cancer it is will all have to come together. We have in Singapore often what we call tumor boards. Uh, tumor board is where all the specialties come together to discuss all the cases of the of the patients. So we do, yeah, that's how we say that. But then we discuss and then we present the case, each patient, and then each specialty will then dis will tell, will discuss, and then we discuss what's the best treatment for each patient. Okay, so about the early screening, you see the trend of people going to for early screening for cancer prevention, or yeah. So the screening usually is about thirty percent. 30% in the category, that means, uh, so in the government policy, they say this is a group that we advise, but only 30% because a mammogram, you have to pay for it, yeah? so it's an x-ray. So people think that I don't have cancer, why? If I go and detect cancer, then, then it's bad, yeah? I don't want to know. Some people, they don't want to know, but it's a wrong yeah. thing. Yeah? So to be, to be a screening program, to be effective, you need to have 70% uptake. That means 70% of the population take up the mammogram, then it'll be effective. Only 30%. So this 30% who's, who actually are, they are more middle class, yeah? middle yeah. class or upper class. The lower class, they say, I'm working, you know, I've got no money, I don't go. But when they're detected, that's why they are detected very later in stage, and then there's a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. So whereas the early one that detects stage one, very happy, you know, at least. Uh, because you cannot prevent cancer per se from that group, but at least you can detect it early. Actually, it's cheaper. Because if you detect it at stage zero or stage one, you don't, may not even need chemotherapy. So you have to change the thinking. Mm -hmm. the, the more early, the more you less suffer, you know. Yeah. And it's cheaper. Yeah. 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 So yeah, cheaper is the more important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the least, less, the less treatment you need, the cheaper. Correct. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if if the cancer, the breast cancer particularly, is detected as at early stage, you know, uh, how long does it take to maybe you say it's ninety percent, right? The chance of curing. Okay, yeah. How long is that process take from from the treatment until cure? Okay, if, in, in general, for most cancers, we always say if they can go five years uh, without the cancer coming back, uh, then we say they have a high risk, a high chance of being cured. Now, for breast cancer, certain types of breast cancers, we need to monitor them longer. So, so they, it depends on the type of breast cancer. For example, the triple negative breast cancers, if they are in five years' time, they haven't relapsed, then most of them will never have the breast cancer again, so they are cured. But some of the, the more common type of breast cancer, what we call the hormone sensitive type of breast cancer, those kinds can still relapse after 10 years. So those ones you need to monitor for at least 10 years. Yeah. And I want to know more about you as a doctor. Uh, you work on families in Singapore. Maybe this, uh, you work in more than one clinic or one hospital. Yeah, so we are both from a cancer center called Icon Cancer Center. Icon is, uh, was originally from Australia, but then, then they moved into Singapore about three years ago. In Singapore, Icon Cancer Center uh, runs uh, cancer centers in, in all over Singapore. So we have clinics in, uh, in most of the hospitals in Singapore, all the private hospitals in Singapore, we have a clinic there. So for me, I am in Mount Elizabeth, Novena, Mount Alvernia, uh, most of the time. But I also go to Glen Eagles and uh, Farrer Park Hospital. So whenever there are patients there, I will go. But most of my time, I spend in Mount Elizabeth Novena and Mount Alvernia uh, Hospital. Uh, we share, we share the same. Yeah, yeah. We share the same. So whenever he tell me to see, I will see. Yeah. <laughs> That's simple. Yeah. So but we go everywhere. We go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But the important thing, no matter which hospital you are, whether which cancer group, the important thing is to diagnose it early, diagnose it correctly, and also to give the treatment early. But the, I think the important thing is to diagnose it correctly, so, and then diagnose it at an earlier stage. So sometimes, you know, in some people in places like radiotherapy is a huge problem, yeah? not mm. just in Singapore is okay, but other parts of the world around here, the machine is very expensive to build. Yeah. And that's why the waiting list sometimes take a month, two months, three months, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a huge difference. Whereas for radiotherapy, I can start the patient within two days mm. because we have the capacity to do it. And I think this is a setting. So my motive and ours is actually, is, is the important thing is that I can share the knowledge with, with people so that I can tell them how to do it properly. Because at the end, if I see few hundred patients in Singapore, that's all I can help few hundred patients. If I can help other doctors to improve their knowledge, I can help a few thousand patients without, without me knowing what, you know, seeing them. Because at the end, we all are doctors, we are there to help and cure cancer. 
and, and we wanted to share the knowledge and that's why we are here today is we want to share. So tomorrow we are going to go to Maranatha University to speak to doctors yeah. because important is that we learn, we share what we learn so that everyone can benefit and use the same. Uh, cancer in a way is very good that we are protocolized. Yeah? If you have this stage, we just follow this. You should get this outcome. So actually it's just a following protocol. You follow protocol, you should get the outcome. Just as, but the protocol, you must be tested, must be evidence-based, must be tried and tested. And, and once we follow this, so we can hopefully we'll be able to share knowledge. And, and I come from the UK. He, he's trained in Australia, I'm trained in the UK. So, so we are trained foreign. When we come back, uh, our heart is still to help our own people around our own places, you know, and, and, and that's, why, that's why we are here today, I think. And that is the location of uh, ICOM Clinic in Singapore? Yeah, so ICOM Clinics, uh, like I said, in every, we have a clinic in every, all the private hospitals in Singapore. So we have one in Farrer Park, Mount Elizabeth, Orchard, Glen Eagles, Mount Elizabeth, Novena, oh. Mount Alvernia, and even one in Paragon. Yeah, so we have clinics everywhere. Well, for our radiation, it's all, uh, at the moment it's only at Farrah Park, but then we will be next year, so we'll have one in uh, Mount Alvernia as well. For, for, patient, for cancer patients, when uh, they diagnose with cancer, they uh, uh, Think that this uh, disease is death. Some kind of Yes. So, as an uh, uh, oncologist, how you face this fearness and uh, pessimism? Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in cancer yeah. Yeah. I, I think cancer is uh, strike a lot of fear. The fear is because people think that they're going to die in pain. That's number one. They say it's going to be painful when I die. And when I die, I'm going to suffer before I die. That is the misconception. Uh, because if the cancer is treated properly in the first place, you may not die. Okay? The second thing, we now have very good palliative care and good treatment that we can actually help the symptoms. Let's say you got pain in the spread to the bone. And actually we can give real therapy to the bone and we got spinal surgeon who can fix the bone and put metal rods to stop this fracture. So there are other things we can do to help it. So cancer may not be, well, eventually we're all going to die. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. And, but we, they wanted to die without pain and they want to die hopefully uh, with faith. Yeah. So, so we are Christians and, and then we say that at the end of the day, our life on earth is limited. You know? Our life is not in our hands, it's in God's hands. Yeah? Yeah, it's yeah. in Allah's hands. Right? So at the end, when we go back to meet our maker, that is where we are supposed to go. So it is true, right? Yeah. So at the end, when we are here, we try to live our life as happy as we can, as meaningful as we can. So sometimes the patient will ask me, so the truth, I'm stage four. What is there to live? You better mm. kill, give me something for me to kill me now mm. because I cannot afford your treatment, too expensive. Then just kill me now, isn't it better, you know? So I say, no, you see, because even if you have six months to live, then your six months of life is going to be the most important thing in life. I say that, what do you enjoy? They say, what is your regret? Then help you to fulfill the regret. So most of the regrets, number one, I did a survey of cancer patients, what they are regret. Number one regret is that they work too hard. Number one in Singapore. <laughs> work too hard. They say I work too hard. Now the money I earn, I cannot bring with me. It's so stupid, right? Mm -hmm. So the second thing they say that I've not spent enough time with my family. And the third thing is that I've not looked after myself. They don't go for holiday. They try to save the money, save, 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 save for the yeah. old age. But then they say I never go for a holiday for a long time. So actually the six months of life that you have, then you try to enjoy, spend time with family and actually find your meaning in life. And sometimes a cancer patient before they die, they really find that that's my real meaning of life is what they go back and we look at. I tell you a story of how cancer changed a person's life for the better. So that this uh, wife and the, and the husband, they quarrel all the time. At one point, they're going to divorce. You know, so they are going to be shy. so very angry because they like to shout to each other. So one day that the, the, the guy have a, have a lung cancer, he's stage four. Then the wife feels sorry for him, so he go and cook for him and look after him. So actually, he find that for the first time he realized that the wife actually loved him a lot. So he said that the cancer saved my marriage. You know, that changed the whole perspective of why. So they say, I'm very grateful. Then they say that, then the wife said that, you know, no, although we cannot grow old together, but at least God gave us a chance to be together. That is enough. Yeah. That is very meaningful, right? Yeah. So we have to look at that and, and, and we feel happy 
that, that the relationship given by God is what we have and cherish that. So the cherishment of life is important than how long you live. Yeah. Yeah. But the most important thing, uh, the most important thing is uh, cancer is actually uh, can be cured. Yes, right? yes. Uh, yes. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Earlier it yes. is correct. <coughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. it can be. Yeah, so that's an important message that the patients must know that you know everybody thinks cancer is you get cancer you're gonna die, but it's not true anymore. You know, uh, you many cancers you catch it you you can cure, and then even if you catch it late, uh, even some you know even something like lung cancer, right? Lung cancer last time most patients if they get it uh, stage four lung cancer most of them would be dead within six months at the very most one year, but then now with all the new treatments for lung cancer some of them can be on tablets only have a perfectly normal life and live for many years, you know. Yeah, so, so they, have, they, they are quite, they will be surprised to know that uh, with just very simple treatment like tablets, uh, they can live a very normal life, they can go for holidays, they can still work if they want to, you know, they can still spend time with their family. So patients need to know that there are many new treatment options that they can help you live for a very long time still, with very few side effects. Oh, very much so yes. one day we hope that cancer could be a chronic disease. Let's say your high blood pressure, it cannot be cured. Diabetes cannot be cured, but you can live for a long yeah. time because yeah. of a lot of medicine. Is, so we yeah, hope, yeah. we hope with the same, at least yeah. five to ten years, even yeah. if you're stage four. And yeah. that is why the, the, the expansion of what we found in the medical science is so important now. We're living at the age where so many improvement, we are seeing the results coming through. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm very happy to say that our practice for, for me and him is more than 15 years. Ten years ago, we have not much. Now, there's so many options to, to go for. But of course, the new treatment now is very expensive because it's just new. Yeah? In ten days' time, they will lose the patency of their new drug development. These drugs are going to be generic and be cheaper and more available. So in ten years' time, you find that as it goes cheaper, more available to other people. Now, it's very expensive. More accessible. Yeah. Mm, yes, that's right. Mm. Question uh, uh, for the cancer treatment, how do chemotherapy and radiation therapy work, or which come first? Okay, so it um, it chemotherapy is uh, using medicine mm -hmm. to kill the cancer.